Franchised is presented by Fakeship.net with support from Emrecell. If you're looking to buy an iPhone, iPad, MacBook or any other Apple product, visit Emrecell today. They offer refurbished, top-of-the-line and next-to-new Apple products at a fraction of the regular price. And if you're looking to sell an Apple product, they'll buy them off you too. Visit emrecell.com.au Well, it's another year and a new podcast. Well, not really. It's a sequel podcast. Welcome to Franchise 2 also known as Another Year of Franchised. <laughs> My name's Glenn, to the right of me is Jarrett, and directly across is Sean, we're FakeShemp.net, and we're kicking the second series off with everyone's favourite good guy, Chucky. So stick around as we shoot the shit, we run through the franchise from the original classic, through to the peculiar middle movies, and right through to the recent DTV instalments, the upcoming reboot, and the upcoming TV series. That's right, we're about to unpack this bastard like a fresh-faced good guy straight off some hobo shopping trolley. You stupid bitch, you filthy slut! Did you fuck with me?! Well, I think I have a fresh. What the fuck is a thrush? Farewell, dear shithead. The Libyans! No fucking shit, lady! Do I sound like I'm wearing a piece of shit? What's up, guys? What's up? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. It's taken us this long, but we're back. I guess this is like an extended vacation it's throughout been, the new year. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been months since we since we wrapped up our last episode from 2018. And um, despite our fucked up schedules, we've finally managed mm. to bring it all together. The band is back. It's good to see you, boys. And you can uh, catch our next episode in six months' time <laughs> when we, <laughs> when we uh, talk about Air Bud. <laughs> 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 Oh, so we are here to talk about Child's Play. Child's Play, a.k.a. the Chucky franchise. Which do you prefer to call it? Child's Play franchise. Child's Play. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. It all went off track when Chucky came into it with the title. Yeah. Yeah, I know. We've, we've really jumped into it pretty early in the piece, but I think you're spot on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my feelings. Well, you know, some people identify with it as Chucky. Some yeah. See, Child's Play. here's the thing, and this is going to get me in trouble, and I know you two are going to disagree, is that I think the franchise only got Good start to getting it right once they started calling Chucky. Mm. I think okay, the f- and we'll I wrap th- that up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's I think kind of where it falls apart. <laughs> yeah. I think the f- I think that you know as far as a franchise goes, here's here's my here's my thing, right? Is that I never understood the the Child's Play franchise, right? And I never understood the fans of the Child's Play franchise, right? Because for me the top the top dogs of the of the, the genre mm. are Michael Myers Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger, right? They're the titans that sort of right, right. keep over the top. And Leatherface can't come into it? Well, he does, but he's had less success, Norman I Banks. feel. Yeah, I mean, like, but even then, I mean, most people in the zeitgeist... Ghostface. Yeah, <laughs> but most most people... most <laughs> yeah, people. That's not... Right. No, 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 that's not Jigsaw. to say... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That's not <laughs> to say that they're the only ones that exist, but they're the top, they're the titans that everybody knows, yeah, right? If you right. said Norman Bates, most people wouldn't know. He's a psycho, they would get him, right? Chucky, I always felt like the problem with Chucky was, right, is Michael Myers is this unstoppable force, this faceless, mm. terror driven, insane person, right? Then you've got Jason, who's this unstoppable juggernaut. Mm. And then you have Freddy, who operates in a realm where he makes the rules and, you know, logic doesn't necessarily right. apply. Child's play. It's just about a doll that's two feet high that you could just kick it away in a cupboard and just lock him away and everything will be fine. It also taps into a primal fear. Like it's. I just, I just don't get. There's like a I lot just, of people out I there just, that are genuinely frightened of, of toys I, and dolls. I don't, yeah. I don't doubt it. Yeah. But he's still just a doll. You could just, <laughs> you can, you can just boot him into another room. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. and the, so there's there's never any threat and any threat that they do give you always feels like oh he's got a knife oh yeah he's got a knife so sidestep him because he's got tiny legs he can't move that fast sidestep him and then boot him on the side of the face and then lock him in a cupboard I am convinced that you're a resident fucking troll like I'm, abso- <laughs> I'm absolutely not I'm absolutely not I just I, it's one of those ones I never understood the the, the fear factor of this doll okay, well, it doesn't make sense to me let's just rewind go back to 1988 the first Child's Play came along directed by Tom Holland hmm. uh, we won't 
pay too much attention to this film because it's more the franchise that we're going to explore. But it came at a time when killer dolls were all around. Like, mm. you know, cinema was populated with dolls, Puppet Master, you know, mm. Dolly Dearest came after, but it was yeah. that era. Yeah, yeah. But dolls, the year preceding. Oh, and, the, sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the whole the whole premise of Child's Play was to take sort of the Cabbage Patch phase that had come along. Remember, they were huge. Oh, yeah, Care Bears yeah. and yeah. Cabbage Patch. And Mancini and, yeah. sort of also was inspired by Gremlins in the movie Magic with Anthony Hopkins. Mm. Yeah, See, that that's a doll. creepy film. Yeah, it is a very creepy mm. film. And I think he's brought it into... Like, the first Child's Play is a thriller. Like, it is an absolute yeah. slasher, but more thriller, I would say. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think it's, it's a really primal kind of film. It's terrifying, particularly when the first moment Chucky comes alive. Mm. It's not like this slow, tense build-up. He just comes to life. His first word is like, you fucking bitch! Yeah, You know, yeah, like, it's just yeah. out of the blue. It happens like that, and... I reckon that's a really terrifying moment. And at that point in time, I don't think we'd heard dolls sort no. of talk in that manner. You Particularly filthy with that slut voice. and things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Never ever heard those words come out of a, Actually, a that, tiny is doll's that, mouth. Is that the opening line? You fucking slut. I think uh, it might be something like that. I, I think, think that's what he's going after him, yeah. uh, after the mother. Yeah, calls her, you that's know? Yeah. the first thing that comes yeah. out of his mouth. And I think that's a really... <laughs> Unsettling moment. Totally. And it's particularly for an M rated film at the time, at least in Australia, I was like, whoa. Yeah, that you always know? that always shocked me. Yeah. The M rating. Particularly because obviously there's the James Bulger n- video Which nasty came, well, that's that, comes, that comes that yeah, comes that comes down the line. Chapter. But yeah. 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 The idea yeah. that it was so the, the, the first well, one was the, so the, lenient well, and the there was three chapters were all M rated. There was nowhere for the rating to go except yeah. R after that. That's it, that's it. Which the, because obviously I grew up in the UK and they were rated R in the UK. They were all rated R in the UK. Yeah, just, it's, it's just yeah. not a, a structure that we had in place for it. No, yeah. maybe they believed your philosophy though. How how scary can a doll be? Give it a <laughs> give it an M fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Let's really fuck those kids up. What what's your guy? What, what is your first memory of Chucky? James Bulger. Wow. Okay. Well, because because I like I say it was rated R. I could we couldn't get our hands mm. on it when the first Child's Play came out. I was five and it was rated eighteen. There was no chance my parents were going to give it to me. And if you're playing along at home, James Bulger it was a case in the yeah. UK about a little boy that was a, was abducted, led by astray two, by yeah, two teenagers. Two teenagers, and they took him to a rail track. The media blamed movies the media like blamed, Child's Play. Yeah, yeah. predominantly they blamed Child's Play three and yeah. called it video nasties, and it led yeah. to this massive controversy in the UK. That's another video, story. Yeah, but video that's nasties just the were and yada yada. But yeah. Child's, Child's Play I'd never really heard of Child's Play until it was blamed for for the behaviour of these two teenagers in the UK right. uh, and then it became then it became like you know the, the school playground it became like this word of mind where it was like oh Child's Play you know, you've got to see, yeah. got to see it. and then it became but there was just no chance I was going to see it so the first time I saw Chucky wasn't until I was in my teens yeah right so I was about 13 or 14 so and that's another thing too so you arguably came to the franchise a little bit later I think even though these are horror films the audience predominantly that gravitated towards it at the time were you know, pre-teens and young teens yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the scare factor is like immediate yeah particularly particularly in this country because I don't think it, I don't know I don't know what it would have been like in the UK but obviously with the R rating pre-teens weren't in for went out for a chance with it sort of mm. thing so it was a complete it was aimed at a completely different market in the UK where here because it was rated mm. M you guys had the opportunity to see it when you were 11, 12. Oh, home, like home entertainment definitely. Well, yeah, I remember yeah, seeing yeah. the TV spots on TV when it was playing theatrically and I was hanging for it and then yeah. when it came out in video it came out in a nice purple cover with purple slick. That's and, right, yeah. it did as actually well, didn't had, it? Actually had Chucky on the cover as opposed to the theatrical art which had the building, building. and the eyes and the sky yeah, and the yeah, lightning yeah. sort of the storm. Cool poster. Which is a very cool artwork but yeah, for video they went for selling Chucky because I assume that through the course of the theatrical everyone's talking about Chucky you've got to see him and they put him on the front of the jacket. Yeah. But um, it was an instant rent for me. As soon as it came out on Home End, I think it was around the time that Funny Farm came out, there was a bunch of good Warner type. Caddy yeah, Shack 2, these yeah. films were coming out yeah, Home right. End at the time. Now we're talking. And Charles Play came out, and it was an immediate rental for us. And the old man and I loved it, because we'd never heard these words come out of a doll's mouth. So we'd, we'd be quoting Child's Play, and I think it was one of the few times we were allowed to swear, you know, yeah, if yeah, it was yeah. in the context of quoting a line from a film. Yeah. Yeah, well, my my first memory of it was on home video. Mm. Like, you know, there's no way I would have gotten to the cinemas to see this no, one yeah, yeah. at that age. But when I think Child's Play, I actually my mind immediately goes to my bedroom as a teenager because I had the Child's Play three uh, day bill up oh, on nice. my wall. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It was such a boring plain day it's bill. It's just the face, yeah, it, like a yeah, real tight. The cover of, of the, the VHS, yeah, essentially. Yeah. But it was there. Great next tagline on the poster, though. Look who's stalking. That's right. I think it was yeah, it was yeah. as well. Nice, and that was uh, side by side with a day bill for. Uh, Freddy's Dead 
Yeah, right. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. 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 No, We've mentioned it before. That Freddy's Dead poster is unreal. <laughs> I, love I had that, that, that tombstone from Freddy's Dead when I was a kid. The video store tombstone that said, Hasta oh, la vista, mate. Freddy. Really? Yeah, the fucking tombstone. Unreal. Man. It was amazing. Don't have it anymore, unfortunately. Probably worth some cash. It's probably worth some coin, nah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, moving along to what I would say... In my humble opinion, is the best sequel of the lot is Child's Play Two. Undoubtedly, made uh, in 1990. I think it's an even better film than the first. I do too. Which yeah. which what? And, uh, and I get Child's I'm, Play I'm, Two. No, I know, <laughs> I know, but I I'm, I promise I'm not trying to be difficult. Yeah. Which one was Child's Play? They they all like up until Brighter Chucky. The so three, how much the did three, you prepare for this podcast? <laughs> I, I watched them all. Like I finished. You only wa- watched Cult of <laughs> Chucky <laughs> or sorry, Bright of Chucky. I I, 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 fin- of Chucky. I I finished watching them this morning. Um. But I just the the honestly the the, the first three blended okay. one to me. So this is Ellie because one set in a factory. There's a big factory finale. Is that part two? That's part two. Right. That is yeah. a that is a yep. cool sequence. Yeah. It yeah, definitely yeah. is. This was directed by John Lafia, who also made a film called My uh, Man's Best Friend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just got on Blu-ray this week, Lance and I can't Henriksen. wait to revisit. Yes. How fucking cool is that movie? Yeah, I haven't seen that. Movie. And then Eon. And this was once again written by Don Mancini, who we failed to mention is essentially the uh, Godfather of Chucky. He's the oh, one he's that the, has he's cradled the, the franchise yeah. from start to finish. Uh, Alex Vincent, the actor that played Andy Barclay, returned to this one. It was shot the next year, like so. His age was exactly the same. Yeah, except for one year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's weird. That's what happens with me as well. <laughs> like, <it's laughs> no, what the fuck? Oh shit! And of course, it was written by John Lafia, who had co-written the first film. I love this sequel. I think everything about it, particularly the factory setting, is just on point. I think the tone of the film is perfect because mm. it kind of is. Remember the movie with Robin Williams called uh, Toys? Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it has that same kind of bubbly, plasticky kind of yeah, feel to everything's it. Everything's going to pop colours. and the first, yeah. the first Child's Play is very dark. It's almost film noir because you've got Chris Sarandon yeah, as the cop mm, and all mm. that. There's all the the, uh, the wet streets and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This one, they just turn all the lights on. They let the reds and the greens and the blues and the yellows yeah. just do all the talking. And I think that makes Chucky just that bit scarier. Yeah. The, the production is... Definitely. I mean, outside of the finale, the finale's the finale is as much as I kind of dismiss it. The finale is quite something, and the production design, particularly in this film, is stand out. Like it is a really handsome, and film. it moves at a cracking pace. I think this one, oh, just, it's whip crack, you yeah. you just get to the end of this one as if it's you're you think you're at the middle, and you're like, fuck no, it's been a whole ninety minutes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it just goes so fucking fast. And cast, Garrett Graham, absolutely, yeah, true. Yeah. The yep. Paradise. Mm-hmm. Jenny Yoga from American Wheel in London. It was good to see her on the screen of again. Of course it was. I feel like yeah. I hadn't seen her as a kid on the screen since American I saw Wheel her recently. London. She's in that Sometimes Always Never with Bill Nye. Right, okay. Yeah, right. I had the biggest crush on her yeah, back in the day. Yeah, I had a crush on everyone. Yeah. I know. That was, that was the same. <laughs> she was in Walkabout. Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know. Yeah, Walkabout, of course. Yeah. yeah. Logan's Run. That's right. Yeah. Logan's Run, yeah, she was. Yeah. I wish, we could, I I'm wish Nicholas... Sure oh, did you see her topless in... Logan's Run? Run? I think you do. No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you do. It's PG. Like PG. I know, but I'm pretty sure you do. Really? Yeah. I wish Nicholas Winding referenced to get run to his remake of that. He's been planning a remake of Logan. Yeah, but forever. you know what'll happen? He'll end up producing it and someone else direct it because yeah. that's generally what he does. He just yeah. talks about it for long enough and then he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to produce it. But then he'll sit it. back and talk about how fucking brilliant he is. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, he did that for. To cancel him. <laughs> no, you really are brilliant. Are you sure? Because I just don't know anymore. Because he, he did that with Wonder Woman as well, didn't he? For years he said he was going to make Wonder Woman and he was going to cast Christina Hendricks as Wonder Woman and then Wonder Maniacal. Brother Maniacal. One. Maniacal. <laughs> Which is just Oh yeah, he did as well, didn't he? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, been yeah. ongoing. Wrong anyway. podcast, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. That's like, yeah, every yeah, other yeah. franchise but <laughs> <Dark Charles play. laughs> Do you know what? I think this one really highlights, I think, Alex Vincent, the kid in this and from the first one. Mm. Yeah. That kid gets the genre. Like, this, this kid knows horror. His reactions to it priceless they're very realistic he screams at his blood Chilling, curling yeah. yeah absolutely and I think he is the strength of the entire franchise even if it's only the first two films we're talking about yeah out of all of them I think they sell the entire thing for me yeah I've got like I mean they just like I said they blend it in one to me I don't know was Charles Play 3 the one with the tagline the poster was sorry Jack Chucky's back yes yeah, yeah. sick yeah that's had a good a, tagline pretty, yeah good. And even the teaser trailer had a bit of that action in it, Did it? Know, he pops out of the out of the Jack in the Box, you know. Sorry, Jack. Chucky's back. Oh, that's right. Because the poster's yeah. him with the, the the Jack in the Box with the scissors, with the isn't scissors, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. So Child's Play three, nineteen ninety one. This is essentially uh, the death of Child's Play because after this, the uh, the title changes. So. Oh, good God! Directed by Jack Bender, who made a movie called Killing Mr. Griffin, which yeah, was very did. cool. 
And Dreamer of Oz, which was a favourite of mine growing up. Did you ever watch that? No, Dreamer. No. What is it's it? It's a bio. It stars Bo Bridges. Uh, it's the life story of Al Frank Baum, who made Wizard of Oz. No joke. Yeah, it's a really good film. It's on the uh, most of the Blu-ray releases of The Wizard of Oz as a special feature. I had no idea. So this one stars Justin Whelan, who takes over the role of Andy, because this one is set, I think, nine years eight later. Years, I think eight years later. Yeah. I mean, it's weird, because it's, it's, it's shot a year later. A year yeah. later. And released yeah. a year later, but it's set eight years. It was released nine months later. Unbelievable. I think the turnaround what? was like almost instant. Yeah, absolutely. Really? Yes. So there was like there was there was it, theoretically if it was if it was released in January of 1991, part two, part three could have been re- released in 1991 also. Well, That's according, according to my research, that is what happened. That is that really. <laughs> so Justin Whelan, he he was in Serial Mum, um, uh, probably great more role in Serial Mum as Scotty, and most notably uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Never yeah. saw yeah, it. I that one with. Um, uh, uh, Marlon Everybody Wayne? was in it. Marlon Wayans, say, Bruce, mate, uh, Bruce Payne, I, um, Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. Irons. Yes. yes. Thora Birch was in it as well. Never I think. saw it. It looked terrible. Was it, it was good? terrible. That was absolute okay, garbage. Right. <laughs> the idea that they just released a third one is unbelievable. And hey, he was in the house that Jack built. Was he just? He played Father Joe. Yeah, right. Because right, right. he must be getting on now. I do not remember him in it. No. I haven't seen it yet. That film stuck out like a sore thumb. Like, it's a great fucking mesmerizing movie, and I don't remember him. So so interesting. Unrecognizable. He's turned into a thespian. <laughs> uh, just interrupting for a second to clarify that he was in the house that Jack built from 2009. Completely different film to the Lars von Trier version. Um, two films called House that Jack built. What the fuck? Anyway, back to it. It all star- <laughs> Look, it also stars um, Perry Reeves and Andrew Robinson of uh, Hellraiser fame yes. and Dirty Harry fame. Yeah, I love that guy. You know what we haven't spoken about yet is Brad Dourif. No, yet. yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> the, the heart and soul of the entire franchise, yeah. Brad Dourif, of course, is the voice of Chucky. Um, there is no other voice for Chucky as far as I'm concerned. Not even Mark fucking Hamill. And we'll get to that soon. Good God. So the general gist of the story of this one, most of it takes place in a military camp. Um, a group of executives debate about relaunching the good guys line. You know, bottom line and corporate greed wins out and the launch goes ahead despite the risk of a PR nightmare, blah, blah, blah. And it has an opening sequence that shows of the old factory being rejuvenated, the new line of toys being produced, and then suddenly we see some blood from the real Chucky's melted corpse drip into the vat and voila, resurrection. And that's essentially how Chucky comes back. Tenuous. Bit of a stretch. Yeah, right? it's a tenuous It's link. a bit of a stretch. Like, a little bit of blood goes into that vat. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, he's back again. Here we go. I do like the military school setting. I just think it's, yeah. a, it's a massive... Once again, juxtaposition to what's come yeah. before. I just, I'm, I'm not entirely sold on the age. I felt like we jumped way too forward did. with it. Maybe they didn't want to repeat such a brief... the same thing again. But yeah. yeah, the fact that we jumped so f- much forward, and then the child in peril this time is, is the other cadet who steals the doll before you know Andy gets him. And even that, then he befriends, you know, Chucky, or he likes to call him Charles, and they become sort of friends, and then he decides he's going to possess a bro, That's being right. him. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, I just, I didn't dig that. I, didn't I feel like that. they should have just ditched the character entirely of Andy, yeah. and just sort of, you know, yeah. worked out, well, I mean, fuck, if they've got blood dripping into a vat of plastic, yeah. they can work out a new way of him to get to a different kid. Totally, absolutely. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be the same. Andy again. Yeah. Why is he yeah. so fixed on Andy? Andy's gotten so much older now, you know. Just just try your luck with someone else. Someone that doesn't expect it, because Andy knows. He knows. Yeah. He knows you're coming for him. But then there's this all this romance sort of subplot in this film as well, which kind of just made me feel like a bit uneasy. I'm like, why are we fucking... Yeah, why what has this got to do with anything? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not a good sequel, but it's far yeah. from the worst. You know, I, oh, it's still agreed. an easy watch. And I think yeah. that's thanks to people like Andrew Robinson and... Yeah. Those sort of characters, character actors in there that yeah. really sort of you know, given it a little more than it perhaps should. Yeah. yeah, and they're sort of they're across the genres, you know. They yeah. love this stuff. Um, and there's some decent kills. There you are know, some the decent Barbas, kills. Barbara scene, you know, the, that uh, yeah, scene's yeah, yeah. pretty cool. You know, is that when he says "Don't fuck with the chuck"? I can't Don't fuck that. with the chuck, yeah. Yeah, and slits the guy's throat. That's all right. The guy who's everyone's got to have the military, you know. Uh, haircut and everything's got to be he's like going around the cafeteria yeah. feeling all the boys hair it's like a really weird kind of <laughs> subtext to it like is he a bit of a pedophile you know you come see me on Monday <laughs> and you're like oh, yeah. I don't know I don't like that guy <laughs> <laughs> really made me feel uneasy reminded me of um, Catholic school <laughs> 
I don't rem I don't remember this one having a theatrical release, although I'm sure it, it did. It did. Yeah. It did. It got a theatrical in Australia. Because yeah. oh, actually, I should. Sorry, I digress on the wrong podcast too. Um, I did see Child's Play two on the big screen when it came out because it was a double feature at the drive-in. My sister took me along to see it, whereas I didn't get to see the third. What was a double feature? Oh, I can't remember what the other film was. This was the second film, but this was the reason we went was to see Child's Play two because mm. yeah. my sister and I were pretty massive fans of the franchise. She of, still of is, the first one. You know, of the first three. Oh, first three. We're we talking first about three films all together. Talking, oh, just oh no, yeah, but two. post one we were massive fans okay. of one, and then yeah, went into two. Yeah, we followed it through. <laughs> yeah, we followed it through. Well, I mean that that essentially is where the Child's Play franchise ends, and yeah, the totally. Chucky one begins yeah. because then leap forward to nineteen ninety nine, Bride of Chucky comes along and changes the entire, I guess, texture and trajectory, flavor of yeah. the entire mm. franchise. Yeah. Directed by Ronnie Yu, who is um, I like him. I think he's a really cool director. Ronnie Yu's amazing. Yeah, he hasn't done a lot for a while, but he was known at the time. I think he did one called Warriors of Virtue, which is what got him the gig on this. He also yeah. went on to do the uh, Freddy vs Jason. Mm. He was he's a massive. He was actually educated in Sydney. Oh, was he's, he? He's from he's he's Hong Kong native. He was Ron like a Hong Kong filmmaker. Made a bunch of yeah, he the the the, 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 uh, the big ones that he'd done in Hong Kong was he'd worked with. Brandon Lee in his first film, yeah, uh, and then he moved on to The Bride with the White Hair that and The Bride. Yes. With the, that was a big yeah. one. That was the one that really rocked him. And then he came to America because at the time in, in the sort of the mid nineties, those third wave Hong Kong filmmakers, Choi Hock, John mm. Woo, like all those guys were all coming over and having a crack at Hollywood. And Ronnie Yu came over and he made the the most bizarre first choice of Is them that all. Hard target? No, 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 no. That was John Woo. No, was John it was Warriors oh, of, of Virtue. Oh, the Warriors of Virtue. Yeah, yes, the first yeah. the first yeah. film that I Ronnie Yu we'll made in America yeah. was. Warriors of Virtue, which if anybody hasn't seen Warriors of Virtue, how do you best describe it? It's basically... Kid imagine falls down a sewer. Yeah, kid, fall, <laughs> kid falls down a sewer and then imagine the Power Rangers were fucking kangaroos. Yeah. And that's yeah. basically yeah. what you yeah. have. Like, it's a really odd film. Yeah, there's a sequel. It is it's quite... Is it really? It's called The Legend of Teo, I think it's called. Right. Not, sure. not okay. running you, though. It's just a director video sequel. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was for, for what it was, as bonkers as yeah. it was, it was actually really entertaining. I kind of like yeah, it. Yeah, I do yeah, have yeah. it on DVD. But Ronnie hasn't made many movies in the last decade. Fearless and Saving General Yang, Hong yeah. Kong films, were the last two that he made. Yeah. Uh, anyway, digression again. Uh, the film stars Catherine Heigl, John Ritter, Jennifer Tilly comes into the franchise and fucks it. And then Alex Arquette and Brad Dourif. Yeah. Um, Brad Dourif, of course, as always. This change of direction, I think, is for the worse. However, I think the film, as it stands alone, is good. I think. Yeah. You know, I, I saw this one at the cinemas. This Likewise, was my this was my first taste of Chucky yeah. on the big screen, and I think maybe I was just mesmerized by the fact that I was watching Chucky on the big screen. Yeah. I think it, it played. It was very gothic. It sort of mm. played into that Marilyn Manson era where everything yeah, was yeah. sort of you know a bit metal and new metal even. Yeah. yeah, yeah time, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. the film was saturated with darkness. It was shadows and all that kind of stuff. Lightning cracks that yeah. illuminated the corners of the room and yeah. 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 And I think look, the, even though Tiffany gets introduced, and I think that's a big mistake. Mm. They did it well in this one. It's Tiffany yeah. fucks it up later. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, look, the film itself, I think it's really fun. What else can I say about it? Just the soundtrack is pumping. You've got Typo yeah. Negative and Rob Zombie and things yeah. like that in there. Even the design of Chucky fits into that sort of middle meld because now this is the Chucky we kind of come to see in the later films where he's kind yeah. of all scarred up and That's damaged. the other thing. They introduce him with the scars. Like That's mm. where the new look Chucky comes from. And when yeah. this one hit, I thought... I remember thinking that that's really cool. I like the new Chucky's look. It's, yeah, it's very bold, horrific and yeah, it's, a bold it's move. iconic instantly. Mm. But then as we move further down the line, the, it becomes really kitschy and yeah, it, it's yeah. tacky. Yeah. And I kept craving the return of the original Chucky, the clean you know, plastic Chucky yeah. that we well, know. Yeah, because there's a point where you see him with the you know classic face on and they peel the face away and it's just the... The scarred shitty yeah. doll underneath. Oh, later on? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. I'm the opposite. I think Bride of Chucky is where it actually starts to get some life. Like, up until then, I thought the franchise was just, was just doldrum, same, same. Like, it's just it the, is a bit rinse the repeat, exact, Yeah, it's the, the exact same shit every he, he installment. Apart, like shot apart, burned. Like, he's basically destroyed yeah. every which way with the first three yeah. films. Whereas this one was the first time I felt like... Granted, the characters were theatrical when you take things like Tiffany and then obviously 
they've taken the doll of Chucky and then even kicked him in it. You know, he's yeah. he's extreme as it is. You know, he's mm. like a murderous talking doll. But then they've even taken him and kicked him in it hyper hyperbole. You know, he's scarred him up and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like that sort of punk rock attitude that you were talking about that was that was the the injection that the franchise needed in my eyes to separate it from being ah oh, now rather than just shoot it mm. like it's just an ordinary film they're shooting it with this punk rock aesthetic that's yeah. that's really lifted the game mate and I completely agree I and mean, that's what I'm saying is that it was like it really struck a chord with me it was yeah. a different direction it looked different and it was an exciting direction yeah but I think. Where it goes from here is just downhill. I think yeah. he runs with what made this film work, which was the lightness. Like, he bought comedy. Yep. Like, I mm. said it was dark before, but the comedy itself is uplifting yeah. compared to previous installments. But then he ran with the comedy yeah. and just turned the franchise into a, a slapstick. Yeah, you I, know? Mean, it did. I mean, like, we'll, we'll get to it, but, you know, yeah. like, it's just, I, I completely agree. If Because it, it, I feel like Ronnie Yu's balancing on a, on a razor you know no pun intended he's balancing on a razor's edge in this film where he's like he's t- keeping that postmodern scream era you know humor sensibility on one side but he's also making it worthwhile for the gore hounds yeah. and the other and he's doing it all right and again it comes down to that we've talked about it before is that i don't think horror comedies work mm-hmm. so then when that razor's edge um when it, when you fall one way or the other which ends up happening in the franchise, it falls to pieces. But I think in the, 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 the thing to note in this case is though it starts off as a horror franchise. It's not like yeah, it's, it's a, a yeah. fresh standalone yeah, comedy horror. It is a horror that we recognize as a horror yes. mm. that mm. has just suddenly turned into the Three Stooges. Yeah. But the thing, I think Ronnie Yu was really excited in, in, at this point in his career because from this he leapt on to... Uh, Freddy vs. Jason yeah. Yeah. and it kind of looked like maybe this is the guy that's going to come into dead franchises and sort of yeah. inject something True. new as tacky as Freddy vs. Jason was yeah, yeah. it was refreshing at the same a lot time. of fun yeah, yeah. Had a lot of fun yeah. you know imagine some other sort of flailing franchises he might have been able to get his mitts onto you know? Hellraiser I mean, he yeah Hellraiser was the first one that yeah, came yeah. to mind <laughs> but I kind of feel like Hellraiser 3 Hickox's one kind of has that Ronnie Yu kind of feel right. to it you know yeah I guess it does it, it has that punk rock aesthetic kind yeah of yeah, yeah. Feel to it. I don't know. What other franchise? Pumpkinhead, maybe. Yeah, well, I don't know. I never made it to Pumpkinhead three and four. God knows I own them. I never made it to Pumpkinhead. I two. got them on Blu-ray. <laughs> Two's good. In really? Its own way. It's its own dude. Yeah. Jeff Burr. Pumpkin, Pumpkinhead yeah. one was awesome. It's a great horror. I, I think really number two's better. Dig. I really dig. Really? They're really different films, though. They are. Really different films. What's three and four like? They're the Lance Henriksen ones, aren't they? I got them on Blu-ray. They're fucking awful. Really? I, I've never done them. I picked them up. X video store, X rental sale. Have you seen, okay, have yeah. you seen the um, the latter sequels for Return of the Living Dead? Like, yeah. Oh god, the really bad ones. Yeah, they're appalling. Yeah. They're Rage like that. The they're, oh. just, yeah, they're just like that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Right. That's a shame. Anyway, another digression. We need to start rebranding this fucking yeah, franchise. I reckon. I reckon. If you're looking for a new Mac product. Emery Cell is the place for you. Don't throw your money away on stupidly expensive Apple gear when Emery Cell provides top of the line, totally refurbished products across the Apple range. Whether you need a new iPhone, iMac, Mac Pro, iPad, or other Apple products, visit Emery Cell. And if you're looking to sell your Apple gear for whatever reason, Emery Cell can offer a generous price with full data erasure, fast payment, and free shipping. Visit Emery Cell's website to see for yourself. Fakeshemp.net uses their products and they wouldn't steer you wrong. Visit emerycell.com.au. Tune in to the next episode of Rewind and Digress, where we track back to 1984 to discuss Nick Castle's intergalactic adventure, The Last Starfighter. Oh, um, what's his name? Oh my God, what's his name? He's not, he obviously he's not Indian, he just does brown face. Oh, wasn't it? I'm Daryl Mitikif. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback to Rewind and Digress. One Pet Cemetery episode. One like, this is a shamble. <laughs> this is the most fun. It's like I had six pages of notes and yeah. we just digressed. <laughs> you know, I'm just skipping notes. Wouldn't it be. To... Wouldn't it be... Uh, I want to see what you do with the uh, when the I when, remember when, that when, guy's when, name, the actor, because he went brown face for it. Like people would be horrified, horrified now yeah. by Short Circuit too if they knew if they. Oh, I do, actually I digress one more time before you come up with <laughs> no. your point. I rewatched um, Who's Harry Crumb and John Candy <laughs> does brown face in it. Good oh God! Oh my God! And it's hilarious though. And I'm like, yeah. you couldn't do it in this day well, and age. Chris, do you want to talk about Last Starfighter well, at all? Well, oh, I don't know. Well, the Last Starfighter. So. <laughs> 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 
why not track back to one of our previous Rad episodes, where we discuss such classics as Jeff Liebman's Squirm and Steve Barron's Electric Dreams. By listening to a Rad podcast, you're helping to throw the film we discuss back into the zeitgeist, which could mean we'll possibly see a sequel, more than likely a reboot, or at the very least, a great director may get another well-deserved gig. I want a girl! I want a boy! You're tearing me apart! Um, okay, so let's just jump through to Seed of Chucky 2004. I, I got no words. I fucking hate this film. Like, with a it is passion. mercifully short at 75 minutes. It's not short enough, dude. Like... It opens with the most shit ass fucking animated sperm sequence oh, with Chucky and so Tiffany's bad. pregnancy right off the bat. Yeah. She gave birth in the last movie. Like, yeah. at the end. Like, that's where this new Glenn character came from. But mm. we have to be reminded, like in fucking, what is it? Now look who's talking with the sperm at the start. Mm-hmm. Race, it's the same sure. shit. But so it's that looked amazing in. Yeah, how talking. many years earlier was I that? Know, was that 28 years, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is. This is rank stuff I find what, I, what I don't yeah. understand is I mean obviously the, the most to me the most interesting thing about Cedar Chucky I mean th- this was the first time I'd watched it right it's taken me this is how little I care for the Child's Play franchise it's taken me 15 years to watch this film right I've watched episodes of TV pilots of TV that are longer I've got no excuse but I just yeah. I just don't care for the franchise but the most interesting thing for me is is this is the first time Don Mancini has stepped behind the camera to take control of his own franchise. And look what he's done to it. And yet, yeah, and yet he completely... This film is a fucking mess. I think the mistake he made was he was playing to the audience. He was doing what he thought the audience wanted. Yeah. Because the last film worked so well, he's probably thinking, well, what was different about that that worked? Yeah. Mm. As opposed to number three. Oh, it's the comedy. And he pushes it he yeah. way too far. And the way worst thing and far. the worst thing is is he, he, he messes with all the rules. I don't I see and again the rules are something I don't get with Chucky, yeah. right? It's like he's a demonic doll who can be re- resurrected and brought back and all that kind of stuff. He can be shot, decapitated, mashed and scarred but then, like, you take something like uh, in later down the line in Cult of Chucky, she puts a pillow over his face and he struggles for air. And I'm like, dude, you're immortal. Why are you struggling? Like, it doesn't make sense. He's not immortal. Like, he's he's all he's all but immortal. Like, he's survived seven fucking films and <laughs> yeah, yeah. sixteen like natural. But for yeah. but for some reason, like, he's gasping for air. Like, yeah. what are the fucking rules here? Like, I don't get it. True, you can blow him apart, but you can't suffocate. But you can't suffocate him. Mm-hmm. Like, he gets he you know, if, it doesn't make any sense. They don't even understand the rules. He's not anatomically correct, but he fucked and made a baby. So, no, but he I does. Know. He actually says at some point that he's he goes, you know, I'm anatomically. Uh, he does. He correct. says <laughs> he says that he says that. I'm actually, this Chucky. is the one where he's jerking off. They yeah, don't see right. Him jerking where off. You, John Waters. John Waters takes photos of him and blackmails him. Yeah, that is to be the best thing about this entire film is that John Waters I hate John Waters him. do you want to look, look let did me you just say you hate John Waters I hate John Waters right, this is John Waters connection because we had the chat from the last one that was in Serial Mum and John Waters is actually in you know what movie. like that's just made me really angry so I'm going to just, re- <laughs> just going to move on I, I'm going to read just the last note I have in my notes about Cedar Chucky we can talk about it a bit more but and then I wrote, we'll get Kathleen Turner to call him up <laughs> give him a phone call I wrote there's oh, just to be fair, yeah, like there's that, just like too much Chucky and puppets in this one Chucky jerks off Tiffany flashes her tits enough said like that is Essentially, what this film is. Oh, it's and it's too meta because Jennifer Tilly meta. plays Jennifer yeah. Tinley, a Tilly, is... and it's like, what the? Ocean's Twelve all over again. Yeah, yeah absolutely oh. ridiculous. Uh, yeah, that really lost me. I was just, I was watching. I'm like, what? Wait, what's but going you know what? on? That is she fucking pissed me off with Cult of Chucky as well because even though we'll talk about it, the franchise mm. comes back around a little oh, bit. You're not going to talk about it retrofitting the story. <laughs> no, I'm going to talk. That annoyed me. I'm going to talk about the fact that the lady says to her, oh, the main character says, you know, you look a lot like Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. told that. It's like, fuck, we, we're done with that. Like, yeah, exactly. We're done with it anyway. Stop flogging that dead horse. She's been in the franchise for 20 years now. Oh, Jesus, man. Oh, yeah. shows. There's another one I've That's had the only a major crush on. That's the only work she's getting these days. You know, I'm not allowed to say it in today's political climate. Some of the best tits in cinema. Well, there you go. At least said it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him say it. Yeah. But if you, know you had what? to choose, Jennifer Tilly or Meg Tilly? From Jennifer. Psycho 2. Jennifer. Meg Tilly for me. Thank you. Jennifer. From Agnes of God. Meg, Meg, Tilly. Meg Tilly was one of the most terrifying things ever in The Big Shield. Shield. Hi, yeah. <laughs> no, she was in um, she was in Abel Ferrara's um, The Body Snatchers, Invasion of the Body yeah. Snatchers. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. she's the one that gives that great speech where she goes, where are you going to run? Where are you going to hide? Because there's nobody left like you. And it just creeps me out every time. Right. And then she goes and does time. calisthenics in The Big Chill and it's mortifying. <laughs> mortifying. Um, the only other thing I've got to say about this one is the 
awful, awful edition of Glenn slash Glenda. Yeah. This Billy Boyd voiced fucking puppet that looks like a cross between David Bowie and the Dark Crystal. It's mm. fucking yeah. hideous. It's kind of like preempted all the discussion that's had now about this whole sexual ambiguity. <laughs> Oh, um, what did I say? <laughs> yeah. I um, just saw the um, fly. As, the, as I was looking at you, this fly just passed. Wrong franchise, dude. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? It's just, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like it's 15 years ahead. And yeah, of course, because there's no genitalia on this doll. And it's like, is it a boy? Is it a girl? You know, this whole identity sort of. It was interesting effect. to watch it in that context. It's weird in watching that it now and prior to that, like I'd never given it a second thought. But. And then the parents fighting over if it's a boy or a girl. Yeah. You know? But yeah, the rules, the rules are the big thing. Really fucking annoying. R- the rules in Red Man. Why well, I don't understand why. Redman, I don't understand yeah. why everybody wanted to be in this film. Red <laughs> yeah. Man shows up. John yeah. Waters shows up. Look Jennifer Tilly's that. conversing with herself. It's Lisa. Yeah. I don't know if I and then all the rules. It's like oh, she's here, but she's the doll, but she's not the doll. She's actually somebody else who's playing Jennifer Tilly. So then there's Jennifer Tilly, and then there's this one, and then there's the doll, and, and I don't understand what's going dude, on this anymore. This is the worst type of Jennifer Tilly too, like that fucking airhead bimboy kind of yeah. talks cute kind of. Jennifer Tilly, I don't like it. Best Jennifer Tilly? Bound. Bound. <laughs> For sure. Oh, Bound. Like She's I said, just best in the business. So classy. <laughs> and did this one well, actually... Well, generally as well, it's a classy film. I love Bound. Wow. So this good. one, this one actually get a theatrical release? In it Australia? Did. It was it the did. last one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I did everything else is it. DTV. I, I did yeah. go and see I it. I didn't see this one theatrically. I just moved to Melbourne and I was living the best life. <laughs> which didn't involve this movie. <laughs> Hashtag living my best life. I haven't seen any of them in the cinema. I've not, seen not yeah, two of them. Two of them. Not one. So moving forward to 2013, Curse of Chucky came along and this was something of a revival. Uh, Don Mancini kind of turned the screws and, and sort of brought the series back to its horror roots. And this one is much more a gothic horror. This was a step... This was a... Uh, this step was in the right direction. Getting, yeah, getting the train back on the fucking track. Yeah, look, I will say I'm an unabashed fan. I do like this one a lot. I, I think it's great. And the addition of, um, I think it's is it, uh, Fiona Dourif, the daughter yeah. of Brad Dourif, starring in it, sort of mm. you know, keeps the sort of, you know, yep. the lineage going there. I don't know. It's 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 had mixed responses. I think Jared has issues with it according to what he's saying before. Yeah, look, you know, not as bad at issues as probably the previous two chapters, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't like the retrofitting, the whole re going back to the first film and explaining, you know, how that the opening of the first film. See, that was the, that the was murderer. that was the one. That was the one. But I'm I just like, ah, oh, right, no, Chucky. Kind I of did kind of like it. Liked the, slash, it. Yeah. the flashback right. stuff did work for me. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, do we need to tie this all together? Can't we just continue a new stream and just go yeah. somewhere new? Yeah. Why has it all got to be look, interconnected? It, it was an opportunity to really sort of start fresh without yeah. being a remake. Yeah. So so much so. Um, it, it, was, it was also an opportunity to get rid of the Chucky moniker, like yeah. get rid of the title. Mm. But you know, and the, the the best thing was Mancini is obviously is is savvy enough to understand where Seed of Chucky has went wrong. You know, because he's like we said before, he's he's the one continuous through thread in every single installment. It's his baby. He's the Godfather. He's finally got control of it. He's he's understood to his eternal credit very quickly what went wrong. And then did a course readjustment, and he's given up that punk rock aesthetic that we really liked, and now he's came back to this much more classical, dare I say it, slice and dice. Yeah, elegant. It's a really elegantly directed film. There's a couple of really classy, well handled moments. It is beautifully designed. The house is remarkable, and the cinematography is is just gorgeous. The house reminds me of House Four. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah it does a bit, actually. In the middle of yeah, nowhere, yeah, yeah. it's got the same kind of yeah. uh, setup. But also, I like the fact that he went back to fresh-faced Chucky. Even though he doesn't quite look the same as what he yeah. used to, there's something not quite right here. When he gets evil, he looks more like a girl. It's yeah. a little strange, and there's a little bit of augmentation with CGI going on. Mm. But then, sort of in the final act, as Jarrett was mentioning mm. before, they peel away the plastic and old mm. scarred, scarred Chucky's Chucky. underneath. So, the timeline fits, you know, this... Yeah hasn't just been a real sort of, you know, polish. Yeah. It's sort of keeping in line with the entire thing. And it kind of seems to work the same way that Hellraiser 5 worked for the Hellraiser franchise, is that it's such a readjustment that it removes Chucky from being the star of the show again and went back to basics about a family that's imploding that also has this horrific doll chasing them as opposed to this horrific doll chasing this family. Hellraiser, Hellraiser Inferno did the same thing. It, it was about... Pinhead being the main star, and then it reset it, and that's about a corrupt cop where Pinhead's mm. lurking in the background. This is the same. 
I don't know if I followed any of that. Like a, it's a family that's imploding, and Chucky just happens to sure. be there. But Chucky's the reason they're imploded. Yeah, but he's he he's not the he's not the main star anymore. You don't think? Oh no, no way. I do. Really? It takes a while for him to kind of come into the picture. I yeah. understand that the events were. The events, the, yeah, yeah, because of Chucky, but he's not the main yeah. star. It's yeah. Fiona Dourif is the main star, and then the relationship oh, with her, yeah. with her, with she's her sister, actress, and then her sister's, you know, concern for the husband's infidelity, and then mm. there's that kind of switch and bait. The, you I kind of get what you're through, doing. Like, yeah. I just, I think the best thing they did was put Chucky in the back burner in this film. Yeah, mm. he took, he took a step back slightly. Yeah, yeah, right. Still the side, to the side, not the back. To the back, to the back. <laughs> So, okay, well, what do you guys reckon? Well, this also marked the return of Alex Vincent, Andy Barclay yeah. from the first film. In a, in a kind of cut scene. post credit yeah. sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he comes back. Obviously, Jennifer Tilly is revealed again right at the end. <sighs> that was she's, the most annoying yes, thing. She's like, absent from this oh whole thing. God. And then they bring her back. And I'm like, oh, thank God it's just for a little nod at the end. Like, that's all we get. Oh, like, it's not... Yeah. And then we find out that, well, it's not over because there's another movie coming and she's in it. Yeah. So it was disappointing to see her return, but then they make up for it by Alex Vincent coming in and kicking ass with a fucking shotgun. Yeah. That was very cool. Very cool. Which brings us to Cult of Chucky 2017. And this one, Alex Vincent is the star. I think he this is, is the, the star, one where yeah. Chucky takes a sidestep. Interesting thing about this one is um, without sort of given any context there are lots of Chucky's running around in this one it's not mm. just one Chucky yeah I don't understand and that concept came back from number three that's originally what the concept for number three was Mancini had written oh. multiple Chucky's but couldn't work out how or why right well it made sense of the, that opening when you got all that blood blood splatter you yeah. could have had multiple <laughs> yeah <laughs> I would <laughs> love to, look there's probably reason for it not happening that way but right. I don't remember reading anything about it I'm just going through some notes here. No, it's just something that he had wanted to do for a long time. Maybe it was a studio that thought it was a dumb idea. I don't know. Can somebody clarify how... Spoilers for those who haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, I would stop listening to this podcast. But um, Wouldn't have started. How, uh, okay. how does Charles Lee Ray inhabit three dolls at once? Oh, um, this one... Did I just miss that in the cinema? Like, in, in, in the film? Like, I'm like, how... Well, he, he, he finds a curse that allows him to divide his soul into other dolls. It's On voodoo.com or something? Yeah. Oh, it's such a... Watch multiplicity. In it's, such a, it's, such a, it's such a... It's such a throwaway he was, line. He was like a voodoo expert. Yeah. I remember, which, yeah, yeah. you know, find a fucking curse that just brings you back to life. Like, yeah. 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 I don't know. It it's doesn't make sense. It's a very tenuous kind of stretch. But, Is um, this a mute or something? I know, uh, is that the wrong thing to say? I but someone that can't <laughs> tell anyone really what's going on and, you know, he just gets in that body. That'd be easier. Than it just, just becomes an insane... You know, an constantly insane. chasing poor old Andy <laughs> back into you know, get an break. asylum hospital this time. Well, hey, look, he's now fixated on Nika. So the whole concept of this one is the chick, Dorf's uh, daughter from the, the, the previous film, is now in a mental institution after the events of the first one because they all assume she was the killer. So Chucky's sort of essentially, you know... Tracking her down and torturing everyone else that gets in the way. The cool thing about this one is the mental asylum setting. I think that's a very cool very slick, one. Yeah. Mancini's managed to keep it fresh by having different locations per yeah. film. This one reminded me a lot of the final um, Phantasm. Okay, yeah, Ravenger. You know, that yeah. was all in yeah. the yeah, asylum. Yeah, true. Too. Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. Same kind of vibe, I guess. A bit girl interrupted, even, would you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the obvious. Brad Dourif came from Cuckoo's Nest. So well, yeah, that's true, what I was going to say is like the obvious pitch is Chucky. Meets one flew over cuckoo's nest. Yeah. Like that's 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 oh really? yeah, almost certainly that's what the the pitch of the film was. Probably, uh, I think this installment's a whole lot of fun. Um, Andy Barclay keeps the severed head of Chucky from the previous film in a box and just mm. keeps him for torturous purposes. Which yeah. I love that that's concept. Cool. The banter between the two is really really cool. And again, like. He's got a head that's still alive. It doesn't need body. He's been blowtorched in the face, but then he can be smothered and like what? Like hey, what logic the left the building rules? a long time ago. My the friend. rules don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you can pluck any franchise off the shelf and. I know, but there's 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 few franchises that I don't understand more than the Chucky. Well, you didn't get this one from the get go, dude. Nah, it's true. <laughs> you started the podcast by. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. What happened? In the what do you think? I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all look they all fucking blend into one of me. Um, and look, the other exciting thing about this one, of course, is there's another post credit sequence where mm. Kyle, the chick from part two, comes back just the way Sick. Andy did in the previous film, which will lead us to 
Another the installment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's when things get a little bit murky. I think the last two, Curse and Cult, are the best, I would wager. I I think for, for, for my are, money. Yeah, first no, two. Yeah. No, but my money. I know where you're going because I think um, the time between, mm. let's say, the original franchise and the recalibrated franchise yeah. was enough to make this feel like a new series. Yeah. I think, and particularly like um, the way they've done the promotional, all the, the DVD slicks and the, the Blu-ray slicks, these are very similar Absolutely, stylings yeah. and yeah. they kind of look like the beginning of a collection. Yeah, yeah. And so, even in the production design of the film, they've both sort of got that sort of really kind of dark. They lighting, flow on. You know, and it, yeah, it, they do look like compacted pieces. If you remove those two comical ones, Bride of Chucky and Cedar Chucky, I think the series would be a quite yeah, fluent yeah, could work. series as far as the, in the production yeah. value goes. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But the, the CGI of the last two is kind of what bugs me heavily. Yep. Like, not actually. I know, you know, sometimes it looked a bit hokey having, you know, like a, a smaller person yeah. in a costume yeah. playing Chucky or, you know, the stop motion and things of that nature. But I, I thought they really added to it because, you know, you don't expect the movement to be. There is, one, yeah. there is one scene in this where they've got a small person in a costume. Oh, right, it's yeah. the scene where it's an overhead, overhead going down shot. The stairs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. in. That's and in. That's in Curse. Curse. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's and it's not animatronic because the yeah. movements are too fluent. Fluid naturally, yeah. yeah. And you can just tell that's yeah. that's yeah. a little person and that's awesome. <laughs> it was a child. It was a child. I'm not talking. I'm not talking midget. You're laughing because I, I was. Re- you thought I was referring to midget. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't thinking that. Small child. I was in this film. <laughs> You're with little people now. Well, I th- the, the next. The next thing. Darby <laughs> <O'Gan>. <laughs> I think the, the next most interesting thing for he me is evil, evil like the fruits of the devil, evil. <laughs> um, I think the, the the next most interesting thing is, and this goes this goes hand in hand with um, this week's big release in the cinema was obviously Hellboy and the controversy that the R rating and Hellboy caused. Um, this is the first Chucky installment rated R, R. which is Australian an, classification, oh, yeah, 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 which true is story. A, which is an odd yeah. thing in my mind yeah. because. It's no more or less grotesque, I don't mm. find. So I think it might come down to like the intensity or something. I don't know, because it's no I more or less. Gro- I think there's it's a graphic. there's there's a couple of moments. Don't get me wrong. Like with the, graphic, yeah. where the where the the, the 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 drill comes out the front of the guy's mm. face and mm. mashes his face, or mm. she stomps, she heel stomps his skull just in. The case of one act of violence too much to yeah, yeah. warrant. And I think in a franchise like this, direct to video, it doesn't matter. It doesn't anymore. matter if it's R rated because they, they're unrated now in the yeah. states at least. Yeah. You know, will the home end say? Maybe the digital release is rated. Yeah. Now it's sort of like the only people are going to be watching this are probably people that have been following this fan fr- franchise yeah. through for at least the last ten years. I was about to say, that, you know, when we started the podcast, I was talking about how this appealed to the pre-teen teen audience. You yeah. know, that audience yeah. is now the adult audience that yeah. true. wants this that shit to be yeah, as yeah, gnarly yeah, yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah. We've grown up with it, so yeah. push those boundaries. And I think Mancini gets that. I think that's mm. it, like even when he failed, he was trying to play to the audience. And I think he's now yeah. kind he of got it read right. The yeah, wrong at the time. Yeah, now he's yeah he's on track. Yeah, I think he, yeah he read them yeah. right for probably Brighter Chucky, but then yeah. read them wrong for Seed. Uh, yeah. Seed. God, Seed was just awful a title too. Mm. Yeah. And even the tagline was it? Get ready for the second coming or something <laughs> like that. And I was like, oh man, like at least Chucky gets lucky. You know, yeah, gone. Chucky that's gets good. lucky. He's kind of cute. Good enough. Yeah, but, the, but the Chucky gets lucky and then prepare for the second coming. Kind of goes hand, well, no. hand in hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we discuss the future of Chucky? Yes. Because I, there are there are two tangents that the future of Chucky is going mm. to take. Let's um do the obvious because the trailers have been hitting the the interwebs and the cinema screens. You got the Child's Play remake slash reboot which is coming very soon, directed by a guy called Lars Klevberg, who also has a movie coming out called Polaroid. Which has not come out. It's been in fucking limbo for like yeah, two years because exactly. of the whole Miramax Weinstein. There is... Debacle. Yeah, debacle. There's also a massive hashtag that goes along with this from the detractors called Not My Chucky. So hashtag oh Not My, my Chucky. Lord. Good God. Interesting thing about this one is that Chucky is now presented as a android, I guess you would say, right, an okay. AI. He's yep. like a robot yep. that... Um, they're calling iBuddy in the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Although the trailer says I Chucky. Just, oh, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah Maybe buddy. iBuddy's the yeah. model, like a good guy. Yeah, it is. The yeah. iBuddy. Yes, And this right, particular is. one is. is Chucky. It's all about a robot doll, essentially. Mm. Um, I think the trailer plays pretty well, though, to be honest with you. I'm excited. I'm I mean, <laughs> I, my yeah. next line was going to be, I'm not excited. I'm excited. I look Because this, to me, you know, I haven't loved any of these films yeah. since. 
the second film. Like I like the third film, but I'm, I'm just so loyal to I'm franchises. Ready for yeah. something new. And I'm loyal to the makers behind franchises yeah. and Don Mancini feels like he's been really, really burnt by this one. He can still do his other well, thing. Well that's the thing, discuss. can he? Because yeah. he was on Mick Garris's post mortem podcast right, discussing right. this at length and the reasons yes. why this could kill the rest of the right, right. the intentions. Uh, I'll give you a small quote. Mm. It just says here MGM retained the rights to the first movie, so mm. they're rebooting it. They asked the producer, David Kirshner, if we wanted to be executive producers, and we said, no, thank you, uh, because we have our ongoing, thriving business of Chucky. Obviously, our feelings were hurt. But then he goes on to discuss how if this one tanks, mm. it what could affect it what they're doing yeah, because they want to launch a new TV series with Netflix yeah. or a streaming yes. service like that. And that's where the danger could be. So if this right. new movie really dies, which a lot of horror movies do, it's true. well, yeah, I mean, but like, it is going under the Child's Play moniker. So that's yeah, true. I know. But the Child's Play Chucky fans, let's you not think, f- you know a loyalist. They've waited. Let's not forget you know. the 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 reboot Poltergeist last year. They're just well, they're rebooting blown. it again. I read recently. <laughs> There's oh, another God. reboot. In discussion. God. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like it, just be, just because just because it's an IP yeah. that has some sense of lo- sense mm-hmm. of loyalty does not mean that it's going to pass. What he was also yeah. saying about this too is that just because they own the first one, mm. he really has owned this franchise. Like if, if it oh, wasn't yeah. for him, we wouldn't have any sequels. We wouldn't have and Chucky at all. Yeah. But mm. there's no loyalty to him from the, the yeah. studio. They no. just want a new horror franchise that can reboot like well, every well, other one they it do. It wasn't good enough for them back in the day. The yeah. reason they passed on doing any more films because whoever was you know head of MGM at the time said, we're not making these movies. Yeah. Didn't oh, matter that? how successful Child's Play was, said, we're not making these movies and gave them free reign to go to Universal to do the series. Yeah, right. And now, now obviously, he's no longer in power. But yep. You know, but you know what? Good like, is money and reboots yeah. are money. Like so. I said, the, the trailer didn't bother me. I kind of liked yeah. it. I thought it looked quite decent. But I, I noticed quite, I, I quite like Aubrey Plaza as well. I, like, I think she's I got. I think she's got talent. Yeah. I've seen this trailer this, with yeah. two full audiences yeah. now. And the funny thing is, when it first comes on and you see the first sort of silhouette of Chucky, everyone's sort of ooh, a bit chill, you know, like right, ooh, yeah, scary. Yeah. And then when it wraps up the trailer, everyone laughs. Yeah. Like then yeah, yeah. the two screenings are like, oh, that looks stupid. You know? Yeah. 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 Because Kill a doll, yeah, maybe. yeah, no, he's scared of dolls. Because yeah, and it's and it's 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 playing. My concern for them is is that it's playing to a franchise that modern teen audiences don't know. My girlfriend's a teacher, right? Mm. And she was in class the other day, and she um she there were they, they, she showed that Sam Neill Meryl Streep film, um, Cry in the Dark, also known as uh, Evil Angels, Evil, Evil Angels, Angels, right? Yeah. And never had a my local girlfriend release on home end. That Australian film without a local release. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is weird. Um, my girlfriend said to her class, "Ah, oh, Sam Neil. Yeah, Sam Neil. He's in this. He was in Jurassic Park." And all of her students goes, "Sam Neil's not in Jurassic Park." And she goes, "Yes, he is." And they go, and then they go, they go, "Oh, you mean the old crappy one?" And she's just like, <sighs> "It's not crappy. Like it's oh, just you know." But they only attention all yeah, of you. Yeah, wow. but she. Yeah, totally. But 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 the, the point of the story is, is that they only know Jurassic Park with Chris Pratt. Yeah. So who yeah. exactly is this remake of Child's Play aimed at? I think I think that the Annabelle audience, like a new audience, it could be an entirely new audience. I mean, it's there's obviously going to be the fans that tried like, and true. The it's been films, tested and you know? proven that Chucky works, and that's yeah. what they're sort of backing yeah. on. You're right. It's, it's the whole it's Annabelle it. thing. Mm. Let's 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 see where it goes. But I honestly don't think it could be damaging to the existing property because I think too many people know that property now as Chucky not yeah. as Child's Play there's that divorce of the two things like, I do yeah. think he's got reason to be concerned I can understand yes. here that oh, like of course, yeah. and when you feel it's the it's ownership it's you're the father yeah. of this it's fucking IP, character really yeah. that they're playing with yeah. Yeah. and he has no part in it because you know and he was invited on as an executive producer like oh, yeah. let's, we want to cash in on your name too so that yeah. the old fans will come along totally. with us yeah this one it, it reeks a little bit it a does lot. Um, it reeks it smacks of just Cash grab to me, yeah. Like the AI factor, I don't know. Like, you know, that's I'll, I'll happily go see it. Look, I like, I haven't been excited you'd be lucky about if it, by you'd be lucky if it gets it. Well, I've got some, it definitely is. It's absolutely Rocho, really? yeah. Rocho are they're releasing it a day ahead of the states. Shut up, yeah. It's coming out here, I think it's like June 20. Or 21st. There. Can you just make that face <laughs> for the rest of the podcast? <laughs> there is a, there is a massive silver lining to this reboot because mm. I've got a quote from Jennifer Tilly that says, "New Chucky movie? Uh, no, Tiffy and I are going to sit this one out." Oh, That's good fuck news. For that. yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Cause for celebration. Opening night. <laughs> yeah.
And then the series comes out, and the series is all her. All uh, Tiffany. It's just going to get Tiffany, Tiffany. She'll Tiffany, get her Tiffany. own movie. Fuck Tiffany, hell. Princess of... I was going to say Power. <laughs> Remember the Master of the yeah, Universe? Yeah, Master of the Universe. Yeah. Tiffany. She, she Tiffany Ra. tits yeah, out. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> 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 that was next level. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, bound to Gershon. I don't know. Yeah, because um, <laughs> oh yeah, she even mentions Gershon and yep. Bond in the film. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the theatrical and uh, DTV franchise of Child's Play slash Chucky. There are some short films that came along that were promotional tools that were really terrible. Um, Chucky's vacation slides had them sitting there watching behind the scenes photos from Rhyme. whatever one I think was Seed of Chucky. Then you had Chucky Invades, which is a series of promotional videos where Chucky crashed famous movie scenes like Psycho oh, and yeah, The I Purge and Drag this. Me yeah, to Hell yeah, yeah. and Mama. And it was like famous oh, scenes, and suddenly, so this, yeah. suddenly, like um, the mother in Psycho was replaced with Chucky. Like it was just oh, yeah, weird. That. Yeah. They were kind of kooky, but yeah, was this, kid, this to kitschy. promote the last this last movie that's come out called Chucky? It was to promote one no, of the new ones. One I of think. the yeah, I think it was uh, Curse. Right. Yeah. It's funny actually because I went to a no, it was like a convention, horror movie convention thing, and they were doing a panel for this movie yeah. called a Chucky before it actually was released in theaters. I was already released on home video there. Uh, and then we went and did the Universal, you know, I think studio tour, and it was all taken over by Chucky. Because and the whole thing was to promote the home end release of Cold to Chucky. Mm-hmm. So instead of having there, whoever, obviously, you know, yeah. Jimmy Fallon presenting it, it was and I think Chucky it, the, presenting it, and in the end, yes, out, you know, October thirteen on DVD. Yeah. <laughs> and look, at the same time too, um, they did like the horror house things they do at Universal. Of course, like yeah. They, he was part yeah. of some of that stuff. Yeah. We yeah. forgot to mention in the reboot that Mark. Ham, um, Hamill, Hamill. Has, Hamill. Yeah. has just been announced as the new voice of Chucky yeah. which that is the thing like we're all against this movie or a lot of us are mm. suddenly someone we respect immensely is mm. brought into it and you're True. like well he's the guy the voice of the Joker like this is True. a yeah. voice that we love True. it's gonna really drag some of those people in you yeah. Know? yeah well it's massive as soon as that sort of broke up yeah. everyone was getting really excited about it yeah. so even whether it was like a last minute play by them going I think we need so to look, who are we fucking note? kidding? We're all going to watch yeah. it and we'll come back with your, our yeah, opinions yeah. afterwards. True. There'll be another watch, podcast. Watch now. this space. Before we yeah. wrap up, the, the franchise also spanned uh, novelizations, comic books, toy lines, video games and things like that. But I don't know any of that so I'm not prepared to discuss it. No. And we don't care, do we? No. 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 All right. Where about movies? Seven movies is enough. And yeah. Well, there's an eighth, eighth, eighth on the way. Uh, eighth on the way. Oh, one TV show. And a TV show, yeah. And that's a lot. All right, well, um, we'll see you on Rewind and Digress, the other podcast that we do. I'm looking forward to that. Me too. Me especially. (laughs) (laughs) This is the end, friends.